OpenAI just responded to Elon Musk's lawsuit and they reveal new information plus internal emails between Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Ilya Sutskever, and Greg Brockman. And at the end, I want to know if you agree with OpenAI or Elon Musk, and I'm also going to give my opinion. So let's get into it. Look at this. The authors of this letter, March 5th, Greg Brockman, Ilya Sutskever. So even though Ilya is kind of on his way out, he still is an author and listed as an author on this paper. And as you remember, Ilya Suskover is the one who really started the mutiny against Sam Altman a few months ago where Sam Altman got fired by the board. So it's interesting to see him on this paper. So they start with the mission of OpenAI, which is fine. And it's kind of just marketing speak at this point. Ensure AGI benefits all of humanity, which means both building safe and beneficial AGI and helping create broadly distributed benefits. And this is really important. They're describing it as not as much sharing the technology as sharing the benefits. And that's gonna be a theme throughout this entire letter. And the first thing that they're gonna talk about is realizing that AGI would require far more resources than we'd initially imagined. And what they mean by that is when you start a nonprofit or a not-for-profit, you have to raise money and the people you're raising money from are not gonna get a return. They are essentially just donating money. And so it's a lot harder to raise a lot of money when there is no return in sight for any of the donors. So let's read a little bit about what they say. Elon said we should announce an initial $1 billion funding commitment to OpenAI. In total, the nonprofit has raised less than $45 million from Elon and more than $90 million from other donors. So Elon, along with Greg and Sam in the early days, realized very quickly and very early that they were going to need a lot of money. And that money was going to go mostly towards compute. Obviously, they were going to need to pay top engineers and top research scientists their salaries and compensations, but... Most of all, they needed compute. And that's likely why they partnered and gave away 49% of the company to Microsoft, who had the Azure data centers and were able to power all of the compute necessary. So let's keep reading. When starting OpenAI in late 2015, Greg and Sam had initially planned to raise $100 million. Elon said in an email, and they're going to show the email at the end of this, we need to go with a much bigger number than $100 million to avoid sounding hopeless. I think we should say that we are starting with a billion funding commitment. I will cover whatever anyone else doesn't provide. That is crazy to think about. So if they raise $100 million, Elon said he'll cover the rest, $900 million. And keep in mind, Elon was rich, but he wasn't 2022 Elon rich, where he is one of the top richest people in the entire world. This is still when Tesla was struggling with a lot of things, and he already had a lot of money from his PayPal exit, and SpaceX was going pretty well at this time, but... Tesla was definitely far from a sure thing. We spent a lot of time trying to envision a plausible path through AGI. In early 2017, we came to the realization that building AGI will require vast quantities of compute. We began calculating how much compute an AGI might plausibly require. We all understood we were going to need a lot more capital to succeed at our mission, billions of dollars per year, which was far more than any of us, especially Elon, thought we'd be able to raise as the nonprofit. Now, looking over the emails, and I'll show them to you in a minute, it sure seems like Elon was the one pushing to raise a lot more money, and Sam and Greg were reacting to his thoughts about that. Not as much Sam and Greg pushing for it, but again, That's a bit of speculation on my end and just kind of trying to read between the lines. And we continue. The next section, we and Elon recognized a for-profit entity would be necessary to acquire those resources. Now, it's interesting that they say that because they don't really show a lot of proof in this letter, nor in the subsequent emails between them that Elon was really pushing for a for-profit entity. Although, I'll let you decide, and I'll show you all the evidence. So the commentary here is, as we discussed the for-profit structure in order to further the mission, Elon wanted us to merge with Tesla, or he wanted full control. Now, that tracks with previous stories that I had heard about Elon trying to take control of OpenAI. In fact, I made a video about it. And it was kind of a unique one-off video, but it really told the story of the early days of OpenAI and Elon Musk's involvement in his attempt to take over as CEO. 
So this isn't really the first time Sam Altman's reign at OpenAI has been challenged when he was more recently kicked out of OpenAI and then regained control. Continuing on, Elon left OpenAI saying there needed to be a relevant competitor to Google DeepMind and that he was going to do it himself. He said he'd be supportive of us finding our own path. Then in late 2017, we and Elon decided to take the next step for the mission. So then a little bit more history in late 2017, we and Elon decided the next step for the mission was to create a for-profit entity. Elon wanted majority equity, initial board control, and to be CEO. So that does sound like Elon Musk, right? I mean, he's doing the same thing at Tesla right now. He's asking for more control of the company. He basically bought Twitter so he could have full control of that company. And he kind of pressures people into letting him have full control. And to be honest, can you blame him? He gets stuff done. Look at all he has accomplished. And I am far from an Elon Musk fanboy, but at the same time, I can't deny everything that he's contributed to the world. So continuing on, in the middle of these discussions, he withheld funding. Again, pressure tactics from Elon Musk. And then Reid Hoffman, who was one of the original donors for OpenAI, but much more behind the scenes. And also, if you're not familiar with Reid Hoffman, he was also a PayPal co-founder and he co-founded the company LinkedIn. So Reid Hoffman bridged the gap to cover salaries and operations. We couldn't agree to terms on a for-profit with Elon because we felt it was against the mission for any individual to have absolute control over open AI. And I don't know, I'm reading this and they kind of have conflicting stories. Elon said, okay, everything should be open source and then OpenAI and really who is behind this, Greg Brockman and Sam Altman are saying, no, we didn't want any individual to have full control over the company. So not exactly conflicting, but it's more of a they said, they said. He then suggested instead merging OpenAI into Tesla. In early February 2018, Elon forwarded us an email suggesting that OpenAI should attach to Tesla as its cash cow, commenting that it was exactly right. Tesla is the only path that could even hope to hold a candle to Google. Even then, the probability of being a counterweight to Google is small. It just isn't zero. Boy, have things changed in the world of AI. So a lot to unpack in this sentence. First, attached to Tesla as its cash cow, meaning open AI was going to be the cash cow, even though at the time it wasn't making anything. It was just burning through cash. So I think Elon had a pretty strong vision of what OpenAI could become, and maybe this is proof that Elon did want a for-profit entity. However, he never says it should be closed-sourced. He kind of agrees to it in passing, but I'll show you that in a minute. And at this time, he says, OpenAI, the only way you're going to be successful the only way that any AI company can compete with Google directly is by attaching itself to Tesla, having those additional resources. So very, very interesting to see how the tides have changed in just a handful of years. Then Elon chose to leave OpenAI, saying that our probability of success was zero and that he planned to build an AGI competitor within Tesla. So he definitely is building AI within Tesla, but it's not necessarily the AGI that OpenAI is building. It is real world AGI, which is you know just as important, maybe even more so. When he left in February 2018, he told our team he was supportive of us finding our own path to raising billions of dollars. In December 2018, Elon sent us an email saying, even raising several hundred million won't be enough. This needs billions per year immediately or forget it. Now, all of this doesn't necessarily mean he thinks it should be closed source. He just thinks it should be really well funded. And Maybe that's the same thing. If you have a for-profit entity, if you're going to commercialize AI and that's the way that you're going to have access to billions of dollars, maybe that's what he meant. But that is not what he said. He just said it needs to be well-funded. Next, we advance our mission by building widely available beneficial tools. And they continue with this sentiment throughout the entire letter, which is, we're building the tools. We're not going to share the research, but we're going to share the benefits. We're going to open up the tools so you can use them, but we control them. So in this entire section right here, they basically just give examples of how AI is really helping people and organizations and even governments throughout the world. I'm not going to read that because it's less interesting and it's more just marketing speak. And right here, they go on to say, Elon understood the mission did not imply open sourcing AGI. 
I don't know about that. I don't know. And here's the proof that they have, and I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a definitive, yes, Elon agrees, AGI does not need to be open source. So as Ilya told Elon, and they'll show the email in a minute, as we get closer to building AGI, it will make sense to start being less open. So even back then, even years ago, they had this idea. The open and open AI means that everyone should benefit from its fruits of AI after it's built, but it's totally okay to not share the science, to which Elon replied, yup, that's it, yup. Now I'm gonna come back to that because that's important. It's taking a step back for a moment. It's still a single company controlling artificial general intelligence. They get to decide what happens with it. They get to decide who uses it, what restrictions are placed on it or not. And so the fact that they are saying, hey, everybody gets the fruits of it, but ultimately it's still up to them if everybody gets the fruits of AI. All right, then they end with, we're sad that it's come to this with someone whom we've deeply admired. This sounds like Sam Altman wrote this directly because he has said in numerous interviews that he has looked up to Elon Musk over the years and Elon Musk can be kind of a jerk, but he still looks up to him, he admires him, and I believe this wholeheartedly. Someone who inspired us to aim higher then told us we would fail, started a competitor, and then sued us when we started making meaningful progress toward OpenAI's mission without him. So a lot to unpack there as well. In my previous video about the lawsuit, I said, Elon Musk almost definitely has ulterior motives here. He almost definitely is looking at OpenAI's success and is really upset because he gave them a bunch of money, they didn't pay any taxes on it, and then they made it into a for-profit entity and didn't give him anything for it. And he's right, but also be coming from ulterior motives. So he's both right and wrong at the same time. We are focused on advancing our mission and have a long way to go. Okay, so they are asking to dismiss all claims, but let's look at a few emails that they referenced in this letter. So first, this is from all the way back in 2015, Elon Musk too. Greg Brockman, CC, Sam Altman, follow up from call. So in this email, they are discussing a blog post announcing OpenAI. And at the time it was really just a research lab. So blog sounds good, assuming adjustments for neutrality versus being YC centric. And if you're not familiar with YC, that's Y Combinator, the venture capital and accelerator firm that Sam Altman used to run and he also went through and took funding from them when he was starting his own company looped a long time ago and then he goes on with i'd favor positioning the blog to appeal a bit more to the general public there is a lot of value to having the public root for us to succeed something that elon musk does exceptionally well with his companies it is the reason why with spacex they live stream all of the launches it's why they have really splashy launches for all the new tesla products coming out uh, he loves getting the public behind him. And then having a longer, more detailed inside baseball version for recruiting. Okay, then here it is. We need to go with a much bigger number than 100 million to avoid sounding hopeless relative to what Google or Facebook are spending. So at the time, both of these companies are worth in the billions, if not trillions. And if they only raise 100 million, it's gonna seem puny and like they can't do anything with it. I think we should say that we're starting with a billion in funding commitment. This is real. I will cover whatever anyone else doesn't provide. So that is so cool. This is real and he will make sure it happens. So announce a billion and even if they don't raise a billion, he'll give it to them. Very cool. So a template seems fine and he goes on to just again say, apart from shifting to a vesting cash bonus as default, which can optionally be turned into YC or potentially SpaceX stock. So I think that's really interesting and I don't quite understand it. In the beginning, he says, don't make it YC centric, but then he says, which can optionally be turned into YC or potentially SpaceX stock. So I think he's talking about the compensation for Greg and Sam and potentially other early employees being turned into YC or SpaceX stock. I'm not sure how that makes sense at all because as I understood it, OpenAI is a completely independent entity from both of those companies. So that's really interesting. If you know what that means, let me know in the comments. And then the next one, Elon Musk to Ilya and Greg. Sam Altman is not on this email. So redacted is exactly right. I'm not sure who they're talking about here. We may wish it otherwise, but 
in my and blank's opinion, Tesla is the only path that could even hope to hold a candle to Google. Even then, the probability of being a counterweight to Google is small. It just isn't zero. So I don't know who this is. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably somebody else at Tesla, uh, but I'm really not sure. And this is another email, and this is actually deeper in the email thread. So we have from, not sure, to Elon Musk. And they start by working at the cutting edge of AI is unfortunately expensive, for example, and they completely blank this out. So this might be some insider information about a company that tried to do something and couldn't, I'm not sure. In addition to DeepMind, Google also has Google Brain, Research and Cloud, TensorFlow, TPUs, and they own about a third of all research. In fact, they hold their own AI conferences. I also strongly suspect that compute horsepower will be necessary, and whoever wrote this was 100% right, and possibly even sufficient to reach AGI. So if you have enough compute, you will reach AGI. And new cutting edge technological breakthroughs might not even be necessary. This is at 2018, which is after the famous Transformers paper came out. The core algorithms we use today have remained largely unchanged from the 90s. Not only that, but any algorithmic advances published in a paper somewhere can almost immediately re-implemented and incorporated. Conversely, algorithmic advances alone are inert without the scale to also make them scary. So. What they are saying is when a company or a research lab comes out with a new piece of research, it can just be re-implemented. And that's literally exactly what happened with the Transformers paper. Google published it, OpenAI saw it, and made something of it where Google really didn't. But again, we don't know who this email is from, but it is to Elon Musk. It seems to me that OpenAI today is burning cash and that the funding model cannot reach the scale to seriously compete with Google, an $800 billion company. So they hadn't yet reached a trillion dollar mark. If you can't seriously compete but continue to do research in open, you might in fact be making things worse and helping them out for free because any advances are fairly easy for them to copy and immediately incorporate at scale. Funny, the opposite actually happened. Google did the research, published the Attention is All You Need paper, which is the Transformers paper. OpenAI took it and implemented it in a really awesome way. A for-profit pivot might create a more sustainable revenue stream over time and would, with the current team, likely bring in a lot of investment. However, building out a product from scratch would steal focus from AI research. All right, so I'm gonna skip a bit, and here it says, the most promising option I can think of, as mentioned earlier, would be for OpenAI to attach to Tesla as its cash cow. So I don't know who said this. I'm very, very interested, but we don't know. I believe attachments to other large suspects, Apple, Amazon, would fail due to incompatible company DNA. Using a rocket analogy, Tesla already built the first stage of the rocket with the whole supply chain of Model 3 and its onboard computer and a persistent internet connection. So then this person goes on making the case for joining Tesla. And then they end with, I cannot see anything else that has the potential to reach sustainable Google scale capital within a decade. Oh, they were so wrong about that. Then Elon Musk to Ilya, Greg, and Sam, my probability assessment of OpenAI being relevant to DeepMind Google without a dramatic change in execution and resources is 0%. Not 1%, 0%. Complete fail, not a chance you're gonna succeed. This is in 2018. I wish it were otherwise. Even raising several hundred million won't be enough. This needs billions per year immediately or forget it. This line turned out to be true. They need a ton of cash. However, this 0% turned out to be completely false, but they did have a change in execution. They changed to a for-profit entity, but that is not what Elon said here. He is suggesting either he takes control or they join Tesla, which I guess by default makes them a for-profit entity. I don't know what they were exactly planning there. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna read from this inside email first. So from blank, we don't know who that is from, to Elon Musk, happy new year, congratulations on landing the new Falcon 9, great. Uh, I've seen you've been doing a lot of interviews recently extolling the virtues of open sourcing AI, but I presume you realize that this is not some sort of panacea that will somehow magically solve the safety problem. So whoever wrote this email is probably the same person who has been trying to convince them to join Tesla. But he says, or she says, you realize that this is not some sort of panacea that will somehow magically solve the safety problem. There are many good arguments as to why the approach you are taking is actually very dangerous and in fact may increase the risk to the world. 
Some of the more obvious points are articulated in this blog post that I'm sure you've seen, and they reference this blog post. So let's take a look at that quickly. So this is a blog by Scott Alexander, and I had not actually heard of this name. And looking it up on Rational Wiki, we see that he began writing on Less Wrong under the name Evain, and then branched out to his own blog, Slate Star Codex. So Scott Alexander is the pen name of less wrong rationalist, blogger, and psychiatrist Scott Alexander Siskind. After graduating with a bachelor's degree magnum cum laude in philosophy, he qualified in medicine at University College Cork, National University of Ireland. Okay, so just a really smart dude. So I'm not gonna go through this entire blog post, although it is quite interesting, but the gist of it is Scott Alexander does not believe in open source AI. If you wanna see me do a full video just about this paper, cause it is interesting to think about the ethics and the moral outcomes possible when you think about AGI and open source AI, uh, let me know in the comments. Now here is OpenAI's proof that Elon Musk wanted a for-profit entity. Here is the majority of the proof at least. So from Ilya to Elon and Sam and Greg, the article is concerned with a hard takeoff scenario. If a hard takeoff occurs and a safe AI is harder to build than an unsafe one, then by open sourcing everything, we make it easier for someone unscrupulous with access to overwhelming amount of hardware to build an unsafe AI, which will experience a hard takeoff. As we get closer to building AI, it will make sense to start being less open. And that is what they quoted in the blog post above. The open in open AI means that everyone should benefit from the fruits of AI after it's built, but it's totally okay to not share the science, even though sharing everything is definitely the right strategy in the short and possibly medium term for recruiting purposes. And then Elon Musk says, yup. Now, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here for a second. I think there's a chance that Elon gets a million emails, and he probably doesn't spend the right amount of time reading through every single word in every single email he gets. He may have just skimmed this email and just said, yup. I would not consider his yup being a definitive agreement with everything in this email. Although, you know, maybe legally it is. I'm not sure. I'm not a lawyer. But that is an interesting take nonetheless. And so that's it. What do you think? Do you think OpenAI is gonna be able to dismiss all claims? Do you think they're right here? Do you think they've kind of shown the receipts necessary to show that Elon is actually BSing and is maybe just jealous that his company isn't able to compete currently with OpenAI? So let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.